Hey, Deckers, how's it going? This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, coming at you live from San Diego Comic-Con. Um, or should I say, it was live about 15 minutes ago, or however this, this however long this video takes. And we are here with the Clockwork Evolution guys, um, and these guys are amazing. As you guys know, we cover the perspective of people of color, women, LGBT, the disabled, and the poor. And we have a comic book publishing team out of the good old town of London. You guys know I love you guys out there, especially Gar Black Games. How you guys doing? So, how are you guys doing? Got to do that whole thing again because I forgot to push record. <laughs> I have been awake for too many days. Yay! Hey, my name's Yomi. I am creator of Clockwork Watch, which is uh, a, Vic a new Victorian sort of steampunk drama um, about weird science automatons and love. Um, books, we're on book eight now. All the books are told, all three sections of the books are told from a different perspective and run parallel. Uh, the story is told through a graphic novel, but also immersive theater. And at each immersive theater event, people get to interact with our characters, and then afterwards we ask them to write articles or stories about their experiences, which we publish online as part of our camp. So it's told, the story's told across several different platforms, and it's co-created. Oh my I god, co-created by the fans. Co-created by the fans. Oh, that is brilliant. Yes, and uh, I'm alongside my collaborator and supreme being, he who shall be called Corey Brotherson. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Brotherson, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I am very good. Okay, so you are writer, editor, supreme being, supreme being <laughs> partner, right hand, um, tuner of gravity, Checker of punctuate, punctuation <laughs> and holder right. of that which is relevant. And, and, and a man who believes that, that it takes balls to, to be a fairy. fairy. Absolutely. Well, yes. it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> so I help Yomi with uh, Copper Watch. I edit a lot of the books that he does. I helped adapt one of the screenplays that he did originally to turn it into a graphic novel. So I am very much kind of like there from, from the kind of uh, the gears, as it were, to help keep things turning along. But I also do some of my own stuff too, so I do Magic and Myths, which is about a young lady who is basically struggling with physical disability, she's struggling with the fact that her life is not very good, and uh, on top of that she's given the opportunity to become a supernatural heroine across the ages, and she doesn't know what the cost of being her 15 minutes of fame are going to be. Ooh. So we're really following the, the trials and tribulations of a young woman who has a different world now, but has to deal with witches, gods, monsters, and so on and so forth. Power and accountability, you say? <laughs> wow, consequences in literature. What a novel concept. I know, tell me about it. He's a little bit warped like that. <laughs> And on top of that, I'm also working on an anthology which basically follows four women across different genres and they're all drawn by women as well. So we've got science fiction, we've got fantasy, we've got a mixture of science fiction and fantasy and also fable prose kind of thing as well. We should all deal with things like mental health, self-identity, dealing with middle age and other themes and issues that we generally don't tend to get explored in genre fiction. Well, that is fantastic. Now. Where can the people find you guys online, in person? What what gigs do you guys have coming up? Uh, well, we are online under Clockwork Watch, as in wristwatch, clockworkwatch.org for our um, production site. And the co-created world is on clockworkwatch.com. Oh, well, fantastic. Um, so Clockwork we kind of Watch. Give you, Clockwork Watch, yes, we give people both sides. You can, you can either go with the normal narrative and see what is being co-created by members of the public and contribute. Or you can look behind the scenes and see what we're doing. The press that we get, the sort of promotional stuff we're doing, sneak previews of some of the work. Um, with regards to where we're going to be, we have the Asylum in the UK, which is uh, probably one of the world's largest steampunk conventions. Uh, that's coming up in August. In September, I believe we have Thought Bubble, which comes up in Leeds. Uh, in October, I believe we are doing um, the, another immersive event at the Lakes International Public Arts Festival in Kendall. In November, we have MCM in London. And the big one that we're planning on towards next year is, is the, the Huntington Beach uh, event, which is going to be our first live event outside the UK. Wow. Well, you know what? 
We promise here at Back on the Deck that we are going to be there. Not with bells on, because that would not be amusing for <laughs> something that is said in the age of good old Queen Vicky. Yay, um, indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. So no, it's going to be, I mean, we, we, the plan is to take over the whole promenade. Ooh. So that's all I can say about it. Well, we don't fantastic. do things small. We don't do things small. I mean, this is a this is a this is a small press, independent, self-published effort that we have over the years collaborated with the the, the, the the Royal Observatory, the National Maritime Museum, the Scottsdale, Arizona Public Library, um, the East India Company Archives, um, Latitude Festival. I mean, the story goes on, and it's because. It has such a richness that people like to align what they're doing um, with, 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 with what we're doing. Um, oh. On the plus side, how many stories have you come across where they've been able to sell, sell in terms of fictionally sell, a beer that hasn't been in existence since Queen, since Queen Victoria was alive? Oh, wow. We are selling. As part of our story, Hodgson's IPA, the very first beer to be called the Hodgson Pale Ale. I say selling and said that it is not for sale. It could never be for sale, but it is within our story world. And if you come to our live events, you may just be lucky enough to try something. Well, that is fantastic. Now, is there anything that you would tell the young writers of color or female or LGBT or disabled and especially the poor? Um, around the world, from your guys' experience, what would you, what would you tell them? Your perspective matters. Yes, definitely. It's definitely Absolutely. vital. Yeah. We need more perspectives that cover a spectrum of class, race, gender, sexuality, everything. And without those perspectives, without those that whole rainbow of perspectives, <laughs> our stories are going to be very limited. So whether you write, whether you draw, whether you act, whether you do music, do that and you keep doing that. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do that. Because the more that you do that, the more you're going to get out there and the more people are going to reflect on that and say, hey, there are more people like us out there. So you just keep on doing it. Yeah, and um, with regards to this story, Clockwork Watch was first written as a film, uh, but then we realized no one's going to give us money to make it. <laughs> so we decided to start doing graphic novels as a preamble to the film. I've never written a graphic novel before. People said I couldn't do it. Well, here we are on book eight. But they also said I wouldn't find anyone to publish it. Well, hey, we're self-published. <laughs> but no one said, well, you're going to be doing these live events. No one's going to fund you. Well, we wow. have been funded and we have been doing them. We've won two or three awards so far. We've collaborated with internationally known institutions and we're about, well, they said, well, you can't do it abroad. You have no one abroad. Well, we've been approached to help stage up to say something in the US. Every step of the way, we have tunneled and persevered, and we've done it ourselves. So don't let anyone say it can't be done. Well, that is fantastic, gentlemen. It has been a pleasure to speak with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And again, Deckers, we are here from San Diego Comic-Con, and remember, if anyone tells you that you can't do what you do, like what you like, or accomplish anything because of the circumstances of your birth, be it your race, religion, creed, level of ability, sexual identity, gender identity, or your budget. Class or budget. You let them know to take any of those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, saying see you guys later from San Diego Comic-Con 2018.